Okay, we're going to talk about solving a system of equations with three variables. Um, and we need to have at least three equations in order to solve for three variables. Just like when we have two variables, we need two equations. So what I'm going to do is label these equations, just equation one and equation two and equation three, just so you can track them a little bit better. And what we're going to do is we're going to use some linear combination and then some substitution in order to solve for x and y and z. Um, using linear combination first, I'm just going to look at the top two equations so that I can try and eliminate one of the variables. And so if I look at the top equation, x plus 2y subtract 3z equals 50, I think I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 2 so that when I rewrite equation 1 here, I have negative 2x subtract 4y plus 6z is equal to negative 100. And then I'm just going to rewrite the second equation. 2x plus y plus 2z, 2z, you'll have to make sure those look different. 2z is equal to 3. And I'm just going to then eliminate the x's. That leaves me with negative 4y plus y is negative 3y. <coughs> plus 8z is equal to negative 97. Sorry, that was equation 1 and equation 2. I'm going to do a similar thing with equation 2 and equation 3. I'm going to multiply equation 2 this time by negative 1. So I'm going to rewrite equation 2, and that's going to be negative 2x subtract y minus 2z is equal to negative 3. And equation 3 is just... 2x minus 5y plus 4z is equal to negative 79. I'm going to have to start writing smaller. Um, eliminate the x's. Now I have negative 6y. 2z plus 4z is plus 2z is equal to, what is that, negative 82. Now I have just a y and a z. And a y and a z, I can do a linear combination with just those two equations, and hopefully you're saying to yourself, I'm just going to have a different color, let's multiply this equation by negative 2, so that we have a positive 6y, a negative 16z, and then let's see, 97, uh, negative 194, I believe. Um, we still have negative 6y from down below here, plus 2z is equal to negative 82. Cancel the y's. Negative 16z plus 2z is negative 14z. 94 minus 82, that's 212. Believe it or not, when you divide by negative 14 here, you get z is equal to negative 8. Thank goodness that goes in nice and evenly. Here's where we do the substitution part and just working our way backwards. This is where I need more space. If z is equal to negative 8, let's take this top equation. I'll do another color. Um, I'm going to work backwards this way. So 6y minus 16 times negative 8 is equal to 194. Um, did I do this one? Six Y, that's gonna be sorry about that, I had a brain freeze. Um, okay, so negative sixteen times negative eight is gonna be positive one twenty eight equal to one ninety four. If I subtract one twenty eight, six y is equal to let's see, that's gonna be sixty six, so y is equal to eleven. Keep moving on here, plug in the z and plug in the y. Let's go, we'll just start with the very first equation. Remember what it was? x, 2y minus 3z equals 50. So if I take x plus 2 times negative 8 is my y, minus 3 times 11 is my z equals 50. That's going to be x minus 16 minus 33. I plugged those into the wrong spot. Yikes! Stop! 
this should be, this is where you have to be careful because there's so many numbers, so it gets tricky. Okay. Z is negative 8. That needs to be negative 8 there. And Y is 11. 11. Okay. X plus 22 uh, plus 24 is equal to 50. Well, 22 plus 24 is 46 is equal to 50. So when I subtract 46, x is equal to 4. Phew. So it looks like the solution is 4x, 11y, negative 8 for z. So we do x and y and z, always in alphabetical order. We want to do a quick check. Um, let's maybe use just the second equation. Is 2 times 4 plus 11 plus 2 times negative 8 equal to 3? Question. 2 times 4, that's 8 plus 11 minus 16. Well, 8 and 11 uh, is 19 minus 16 is equal to 3. So that works. Phew. You'll be glad to know that this is the longest process for solving systems with three variables. Let's take a look at the next situation that really just involves some substitution. These equations look much simpler because each one doesn't have all three variables. And in fact, this second one only has one variable in it. So we're going to start with that one. If negative 3t is equal to 12, then t is equal to negative 4. Bam, we already have one variable. Well, once we have vari one variable, let's plug it into the variable that we know. So 6s plus 5 times negative 4 for the t is equal to 10. 6s subtract 20 is equal to 10 if I add 20 to both sides. 6s is equal to 30 divided by 6. s is equal to 5. And so then clearly I can plug the s into this one up here. 5r plus 2 times 5 is equal to 0. 5r plus 10 is equal to 0. Subtract 10. 5r is equal to negative 10. 5r is equal to negative 2. Pretty simple, this method. So it looks like we have a solution of... Now here's where we have to check. We have to go alphabetical order. P, Q, R, S, T. Okay. I just have to do the alphabet in my head to figure it out. So it's going to be negative 2, 5, and negative 4 is the way that we write this. If you wanted to do a quick check, we could probably check this out. Uh, maybe with the bottom equation, 6 times s. So 6 times 5 plus 5 times negative 4, is that equal to 10? Well, that's 30 minus 20. Yeah, that's equal to 10. So it checks. Nice, simple method, but again, we're starting with simpler equations. Okay. If you look at the next example, again, three much more complicated equations because they, each equation has all three variables in it. But notice this is still set up in standard form. And if equations are in standard form, then you can use a matrix equation. And you're going to set it up the same way um, as you would if you just had two equations, except you're going to have a 3 by 3 for your matrix A. So I would have 6 and 2 and negative 3. Again, I'm taking the coefficients from the equation. 7, negative 5, and 1. 2, 8, and 3, and I have x and y and z, and I have negative 17, 72, and negative 21. So I'm putting this in. This is a 3 by 1. I'm putting this in for matrix B. And I'm not going to show you on the calculator because I know you know how to do it, but you're going to do A to the negative 1 still times matrix B. And you should get as a solution, and maybe you want to check this on your own, you should get 4 negative 7 and 9. And if you wanted to check this, we could plug it in to check. Let's just use the top equation as 6 times 4 plus 2 times negative 7. Subtract 3 times z is 9. Is that equal to negative 17? Question. Well, that's 24. Subtract 14. Subtract 27. Well, that's 
it's going to be, let's see, 24 minus 14 is 10, subtract 27 is negative 17, so that works. So probably the easiest method here is your matrix equation, if it's set up like this. Good to know that first method, though, with all the different linear combinations and substitute, sort of substituting back in. Last example is when you have a word problem. This is a very typical word problem where we're saying, oh, what are the different numbers that make up these different parts? Um, it says the sum of three numbers is 15. doesn't tell us what the three numbers are, but we can just assume that we have x and y and z, and they add up because sum means when you add to 15. Remember, is usually means the equal sign. The sum of the first and the second numbers is 5. So again, sum, and it just wants the first and second. So we're going to say, okay, x plus y is equal to 5. The difference, so that means we're going to be subtracting. The difference between the third number and the first number is 8. So the third number is z, and the first number, x, equals 8. Here we have three equations. We have three different variables. We're going to use some substitution here to try and solve for the variables. Um, now here's where you can start to be a sophisticated thinker. I can see that every equation has an x in it. So if I get the x by itself in these two equations, I can, <coughs> excuse me, don't get the x by itself, get the y and the z by itself so that I can plug them in for y and z here and just solve for x. So if I take this equation and I subtract x, then y equals 5 subtract x. Sorry about that. I got a cough drop. Okay, so y is by itself, so now y is equal to this. If I, let's see, get the z by itself by adding x again on both sides, then this becomes z is equal to 8 plus so since y is equal to this, I'm going to put this in for this y value here. And since z is equal to this, I'm going to put it in for this z value. So we end up having x plus what y is, 5 subtract x, what z is, 8 plus x is equal to 15. Since I have all x's here, I can combine like terms and solve for x. Well, x minus x, those actually cancel out. So I'm just left with one x here. 5 and 8 is 13, equal to 15. Subtract 13. x is equal to 2. Here's our substitution, right back in. What if I put 2 in here? So I have y is equal to 5 minus 2. y equals 3. Plug 2 in here. z is equal to 8 plus x, which is 2 z is equal to 10. So I think we have the solution 2, 3, and 10 for x, y, and z. If we just double check quickly, is 2 plus 3 plus 10 equal to 15? Yes, of course it is. There's our solution. So using skills from systems of equations, applying them in slightly new ways, having to make decisions about when to apply which skill, but still just using lots of algebra. Enjoy it. Let me know if you have questions.